Hi, Grandis School. This is U Boat. This is part two of the starting hands for beating PLO micros. I know I said I was going to play 25 PLO, but this is after all beating the micros, and I didn't realize it until I finished recording part one. Also, if you watch part one and observe my table layout, it was not exactly optimal for training videos. You may have noticed the total black background and the overlapping tables, which may have confused or a little bit difficult to follow for some of the viewers. And why am I playing 10 PLO Zoom? Well, it's for one main reason, is to see as many starting hands as possible. And like the first video, I'll be playing a very tight starting range like I did when I first started playing Pub in Omaha. And I'm going to keep the session fairly tight and straightforward while keeping myself out of marginal spots and playing in position when I can. So let's start the action. And table number one on the big blind with five clean three nice, horribly uncoordinated, so we will fold anyways. And king um, king queen eight seven, we will call this. If I didn't have a suited king, I don't think I would call it probably four. And we hit a gutter, and we will just check down that table. Remember, at these stakes, don't try to make any bluffs. That tens are really not too much. So we have top pair, and I'm going to lead out on this one, and because everyone seems like they're giving up on this pot, so I'll take it away, and it doesn't hurt to have top pair. He limped, he's out of position, and I'm going to bet. 70 cents, and if he raises, I'll fold. And this is one of the things about being in position. Um, you always want to bet when someone checks into you to take those pot away. And we're going to call this a kakara. We do have a fairly coordinated hand with our King Jack 10 8. Wish that it was a 9, but we call that with a gap at top and bottom in position against another pen. So we have a three ways, and it bet's really small. Um, top pair. You know what? Let's call one. It, let's just call and see what happens. Six. 50 cents, I will be folding, no point screening and more money on the, that hand. And I haven't played uh, 10 PLO in a very long time. Uh, I think the last time I played was uh, last fall. And I didn't really enjoy playing 10 PLO because it's the limit where I had a week where I lost close to uh, 21 buy-ins, unfortunately. But, and we have uh, the nut flush draw and the nut straight draw. So we'll definitely bet it in. And I'm gonna pop this. Should we get in there? We'll raise and take number one. And we will definitely bet to this guy. 50 cents. The flush trap and the gutter. There's no way we will ever slow play in Pot Limit Omaha, especially at these days. Anyway, we, we've got so many calling stations, very loose passive players who will call you down with almost anything. And we'll fold this hand. And even if we have pot odds, I'm never calling these. Unless I have something that's not in, I'll call this in position against a small blind. And we do have the second nut flush. He best. 50 cents. And we do also have a gutter, so we going to call. And hit our gutter. And we will definitely close the pot. And jack 10, we will fold. And jack 10, 
And 896, um, we do have a little gap, and 6 is kind of useless. Pair of 6 is useless at the end of that, so I'll fold at the cutoff. 6, 7, 22, I'll make a fold at the cutoff. 9, 4, 10, clean, we will fold at 9, 4, doesn't do us any good. And under the cut, and table number 2, ace, queen, 6, 3. Remember the three suitedness never really helps our hand because it lessens our chance of hitting any flesh draw. We'll fold in those. Six of three were horribly coordinated. And that uh, four, ten, nine, queen. Um, now when you're beginning, let's make a fold even at the bottom. I'll fold table number two, table number one, so easy fold again. And I did previously make a 25 PLO video, but unfortunately I did record it with my overlapping tables. And you know what? Raise against the big hand. Raises. We have kind of dry, and you can be calling with anything. I'm going to just pop this lead at it then. And he's going to call us down. And out of position, I'm going to check back. And that's a disadvantage of playing out of position. We really never know what he has. So just check. He's calling us with a better and back to our first row. Oh, what happened to the number one? What's that? And these aces, um, it's kind of trashy aces with the fives. The pairs of fives doesn't do us any good. Um, having a set of fives will just allow us to probably lose set over the set. And we're going to call here. I'm not going to raise. I want to see the pot multi way with these trashy aces. And it's a very wet board, and I will definitely not be getting on into that. And I will fold. And that's one thing you do have to learn when you play it. Start playing polynoma is folding your aces. You know, a pair of aces is not good in problem in a while. If you raise with aces and see the flop and someone hits a top pair with some flush draw or straight draw, they have you crushed. So in problem in a while, aces are not the end all and be all. Let's check. Six. Back on table number two, table number one, fold. And remember, when we're starting to Learn polyliminal mode. We also want to start with very um, strong starting hands and we want to stay out of trouble, out of position, especially from the blinds. Here, um, Jack can uh, King Deuce. Deuce is um, a dangler. And I, if, I, if, say if, if I was suited to the king, so I would probably make a call at the cutoff. I would fold here. 4, 5, 8, 7 at uh, no position. I will fold. <coughs> and on table number one, I'm going to Hands, but and I do have to apologize. This is one of my first live session videos, and I'll try my best to stay focused because I'm not a very good multitasker. And maybe what I'll do next time is have a pre recorded session and, and I'll analyze uh, what I was thinking and my thought processes were. Like I said, I did make a 25 PLO zoom video, but I had those uh, tables that was not really great for um, display for video training. But there were a couple of interesting hands, which I will probably make a video on as a um, hand history replay. And with our pair of tens, remember, a pair of tens are basically not that good in Parliament in Omaha. If we say a pair of queens, Suited queens, maybe I may call, but you know, in small blinds, no play pretty tight, so probably better to make a fold with the small blinds and the big blind. Table number one, I have king, king, queen, ten. That's a three getting hand. If someone raises all three, but in position. Let's 
So we have potential to hit the oops, he calls. We have potential to hit top set, top street. Second net flush draws. So fairly strong hand. And if you get four bit, more likely the opponent will have aces. And we see the pot four way, and we have hit a monochrome board. I will never bet into that pot. It does make a weak, I mean, it just shoved it all in. Um, and that's an easy fold. And let's see what we have. That basis here. Not so when you're in multi way in public in Omaha, whoa, what do you have? Six, seven, eight, ten. We're in the big blind with a gapper at the top. Um, if I was on the button, I would definitely call, but in the big blind, I will make a fold here. I want to see what that guy had. Oh, so. Get a full house. Yeah, with short stackers, you know, if you have anything, you know, like the second nut flush draw, second nut straight, or you know, top set, I would never fold against a short stacker. But sometimes they do luck out like this previous hand. Let's keep playing. And we have a very premium, a mega premium hand in table number two, and that's the type of hand that I'll get it in pre-flop. One of the rare times I will um, flop it and get it all in and go for the stack pre-flop. Table number one. If someone three bets us, I'll flop it. And unfortunately, we flop everyone else. Even with that 2.5 raise. Small line, I'll fold. And this hand I have here with 5, deuce, deuce, ace, I will fold. It's not a big hand to play in position with. Card, discarding table number 1, I will raise from small blind. We do have a king. From ten, but five, five is a dangle. But I'll raise against the short step on the big blind. No, definitely raise with a very good suited to the ace. Run down to the run down with a gap on the bottom. A gap in the middle side. And uh, if you notice, most players uh, will be playing fairly passive at these stakes. And there's no need to bluff because everyone's going to call you down. Uh, only race for value. We'll call with uh, gap in the middle. Can we hit the nuts? And I'm going to check back on this flop. And hopefully. What usually happens in 2 5 10 PLO. Another big pot. We do have Jack 10, but I'm not too worried about this one. I hope someone has Jack 10. And we go now. The thing about Pot Limit Omaha is you never want to slow play any hand. It's too wet, and we're slightly. I mean, if you were at the button, we're, if you were in position, I'd be up for sure. And small stacker bets out really small against three players. Setting hands so far, but now you're kind of seeing all 
different types of starting hands. On this one, uh, he isolates the cutoff. Uh, I'm going to hold to that. Ace, King, Jack, Six. Um, you know what? If it's folded to, I'm going to raise against the big blind. And table number two, we have also a fairly strong hand in the small blind. I will definitely call in a raise. And on this one, I'm going to raise it. Raise with that. Raise table number one. Blind calls, and we get three bet by the big blind. We're out of position. Ace King Jack is called. Okay. I'm gonna check back. We hit two pairs, top two pairs. I'm assuming what board, but I'm gonna bet on this one. And when he raises the turn, I'm going to fold. Probably has, even if he has um, queen, queen, jack, ten, I don't know. I'm not going to call him out of position. Two, three, a little better. Check on the board on table number two. I'm going to call this one in position. So 2.5 race. Table number one, I'll. It's not that sunny wet, <coughs> but we're multi way, 28 cents. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to call this. Read that small, we'll call. Hopefully, we don't flush. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm calling this one. And we hit our nuts. Raise is very small. I will bet. Just less than three ups. <coughs> and when you do start playing uh, Palam and Omaha, I'll try to stay. I'll try to stick to playing you know, one to two tables because when you're first learning how to play, just getting used to the starting hand is you know, kind of gets takes some time to get getting used to. We'll raise with our queens with a suit to the ace, one to come. and heads up. I'm going to. It's five. What does he have? Four. Now, when he, um, I think he had to draw maybe like some like six eight, something like six card, but that, uh, that half pot. Four, three, four, three. There we go. Jack 9, 10, and we have a dangle of 4. We're going to raise it on the cutoff with fold it to. And table number 1. We will call that bet in small bond. We do have a potential for the nut flush and nut straight. And 
We have uh, aces on table number one. We will definitely raise three outs. Four table number two. And heads up with our aces, I will bot, I will pop that flop. And if he rears, I'll fold. But we do have a backdoor flush draw, so we have something as a backup on the turn. To a fold. And uh, if some of my hands were a little bit confusing, or maybe I didn't really explain why I was raising certain hands or why I made a certain fold, please note the time and the type of hand that I folded, and I'll try to and post it in the thread, and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. And then notice that I do tend to mumble a little bit while I while I'm, while I'm in this live session, so bear with me, and I do apologize. And hopefully after a couple of uh, more videos under my belt, I'll be a little bit better at making, these, making the commentary of my live sessions. With queens, um, if I'm folded to it, I'll be raising that against the big one. Is a short start. Oops. And with our queen, king, deuce, three, it's not a great hand. Um, hold that hand. King, eight, six, deuce will fold. Cut off with our. If that was suited to the ace, um, I would raise that from the cutoff, but at the cutoff, I'm going to fold this hand. Um, if I had the hand on the button, I would raise, but I'm going to fold this hand. Okay, we're back. I just had to step away from the table for a bit. So table number two, 10, 7 deuces is an easy fold at the cutoff. Queen, Queen, 9, 8, this is kind of connected, so it's a nice hand to raise. And we'll definitely call our uh, Jack, 8, 9, 6, maybe against cutoff. We can hit a bad card, I'm going to just lead into this hand and just fold to re -raise. And we never want to bet into um, our non knotted flush, so I'm going to check back and try to get the showdown without increasing the pot too much. So we'll just come back here. So I really don't think he really hit anything. Back. And I'll just see So he had junky aces. So one really important thing to note about this hand is we had a jack high flush. We also want to bet into uh, our nutted flush draw, but not into our non nut flush draw because we want to keep the pot small. We want to control the pot size and see the showdown. We do because we do have showdown value against many of the players at these limits. He bets pot. Let's get back to the tables. So we're not doing too bad after how many hands? 153 hands. So as you can see, after 153 hands, I didn't do any fancy plays. I didn't really play in position all that much. All I was just playing, doing was just opening it with strong starting hands and just trying to play, stay out of uh, marginal spots and just building the pot when I do have the nuts, if I can. and. 
keeping the pot small when I have the non nuts. And that's a, you know, an easy thing to follow when you're playing. If you have small hands, keep the pot small and control the pot size. And uh, if you have a big hand, keep raising and build the pot. But sometimes, you know, when there's multiple and you have to pure nuts, that's probably one of the few times I do so play like one uh, street, but the following street I'll just start building up the pot. Fold here. And I think there was a four, six, seven, eight hand on the previous um, hand on table number two. I folded that because at under the gun because although it is a rundown and it's there was a gap at the bottom. Um, we are out of position and we don't want to have many calls with that. And here we have the nut flush. I'm going to get into that. And another important note about the uh, problem in Omaha is when you do have those strong draws, don't just check back and call. You just want to bet it and just build the pot so that when you do hit on the turn or. Oops. You may be floating in position, so if he checks back, I'll definitely go in here. And he's a short stacker, so maybe. Hopefully, he has a straight. Nope. And you'll see that a lot in Pavlov and Omaha. Players in position just calling the flop and turn. So sometimes. If you give up too easily on the flop, they are going to make your life pretty miserable, especially when you're playing the ring games. Uh, Zoom games you can kind of get away with, but in the ring games you will get basically killed by those players who float you in position. We could call here, but we really don't have too many. We don't really have a nutty hand, and we could have the, the button calling and the small blinds calling, so we are going to put this hand. Oops, I timed out again. Take number one, I will fold my ace 988. Eight's no good. This small blind. And if you notice how I'm playing, I'm playing very tight from the small blind and the big blind. Even if you think you got some pretty cards, I would have voted this one. Even if you have uh, pretty lucky cards like A77 seven, seven, Deuce, um, Suit to this, I wouldn't call those hands in the front of blinds. Because playing out of position in Portland and Omaha just sucks. So on this one, only 20 cents. We got nothing serious, trashy aces, I'm gonna just call. Three, four. Nope, it was really hit his range. But we got that small blind who could be calling with any junk cards, so they could they could definitely hit his range like four or five XX. Let me check back. This one, we are so going to check back. 20 cents. And we have another aces on table number two. <clears throat> We're getting a lot of aces on this session. But for me, um, if I have aces, I would like some double suited, some sort of aces with some nice um, point or ship style one. And if the other guy wants to fold that, I'll call it. And it's not a great card, but I'm going to. Guy has nothing left, so let's just jam it in. Let's see what we have. And as you know, I'm a horrible multitasker. This is the thing I love about playing Zoom. I can just fold out my tables and just look at the hands. So what do we have? Um, Short stacker had three of a kind nines. 
something new. Too bad. He called with double suited cards. And remember, the double suitedness of your hand, especially when you, the other cards are not very well connected, like here, you have two and four. It's not a really good card to like, like risk your stack with. If that was say like Queen Jack or Ace King Jack Ten, and this double suited, that's definitely a card that I would shove my whole stack with pre flop. But with those two fours, I don't think so. Hold it on the button. Three five three queen. That's a fold from under the pen. Five ten seven nine. It's a little bit too gappy in the bottom and the middle from under the gun. So we'll fold. Queen jack seven four from the cutoff. All those suited. We got three clubs. It reduces our chance of hitting flush, and we have a dangle of four. And seven is not very well connected, so we will fold. And under the gun, we'll fold that seven nine ten ace. Just too weak to play from under the gun. Um, instead of a jack, uh, if that was a 10, I would definitely raise from middle position, but uh, if not, let's raise. Call this. Let's see the flop chief, hopefully, on table number one. And table number two, right, we hit a gutter and top pair, but someone could have a flush draw, so I'm not going to donate any money. We're five way sink flop. So I think anyone here with, say, like suited kings or. Oops. Eight, nine. We have a. We have. You know what? It's a good case where we can have a separate draw. So I'm going to fold that hand, even if we're in position. And in table number two, we hit the nuts. And I'm gonna, I hit. If we get re raise, I'm going to think twice about that. Basically, by the button, who's just as deep stack as us because they could have the nut plus draw, and which we will be losing on the river. But if they call this, let's see what happens. We do have a gutter on table number one. With uh, not another flush draw, we'll just call. And the board pairs on table number two, and whenever the board pairs, and I do have the nut straight, I like the bed a little bit small, and if he raises, I fold. And then these micro stakes, you want to bet, you know, when you have the second nut, the second nuts, or not something close to the second nuts. Because I think it's a huge leap not to bet there, because you can always take those uh, pots down on the river. Now I'm going to fold it down. It's going to see that. So this hand, I'm going to fold that. You know what? Although this. Actually, you know what? This card just sucks. Like, it has four spades. Although it's ace, king, these three. Our odds for the flush decreases, and we still have the button to deal with. I'm going to fold this hand. And let's look at that. Hand that is just fun. Okay, so we're going to back up this hand. And uh, pre-flop, we raised 3x, and we had four callers. And uh, what I stated in part one of the starting hands video is that in 2, 5, 10, and even 25 PLO, when you do raise from under the gun or middle position, you have to expect many callers. So when you do expect many callers, you always want to open with very strong hand that has potential for the nuts. Like on this hand, we have the potential for the nut flush, and we have the jack 9-8, which can hit very hard on the flop. I mean, it would be preferable if uh, that 8 was replaced with a 10, but still a decent hand that can hit the flop really well. So when you're raising from under the gun and middle position, 
always start with a very strong starting hands because remember, you're going to get, you're going to see the flop with two, three, four, or even everyone at the table. Like this table, we have a total of five players seeing the flop. And when we do see the flop, we end up hitting five, seven, ace. Although we do hit the top pair and the gut straw, gut, <laughs> gut draw, not straw, um, we don't want to bet into this flop. Um, any of our opponents could have um, the queen, queen or king of hearts, and maybe a, a gut straw or maybe some kind of combo. So if you get re-raised, we're going to be in a very difficult spot. So what we want is we want to check back, and hopefully everyone checks, unfortunately, which everyone does. And we hit the best card best card that we can hit. We hit our nut straight, and more importantly, we hit our nut flush draw. And we're going to bet close to pot, either $1.50 or $1.40, and we're going to call any re-raise, and we're going to just get it. Instead of just calling any re-raise, we want to get it in here, because we are going to be very good. So we bet um, $1.43, and small blind calls and I'm expecting him to have maybe like a separate draw or maybe like a flush draw and remember at these stakes when players have the nut flush draw they just fail to raise and they should be trying to build the pots pot up but they just call and just keep the pot small when they should be raising and the river we hit a really important card the five pairs most players who hold the type of card that I hold uh, at these stakes, whether it's 2, 5, 10, and even 10, 5 yellow, they want to just check back, uh, check back on this. And I think that's a huge leak because um, the small blind could have a sucker straight. You could have 4, 5, XX, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, 3, 4, XX, or maybe 4, 8, XX. And it'll be calling you down with any um, weaker hands or even like a top pair or two pairs. So on these tight, uh, tables like Zoom. At the river, I like to raise like half pot or just slightly less than half pot, and I'll full to any re raise because the only thing that's going to re raise me is the boat. Like it's, if he was holding uh, a pair of sevens or a pair of aces or a pair of sixes, I doubt he had a pair of aces. I think he would have re raised me on the flop. But you know, anyone who's going to re raise me is going to basically have the boat, and I'll fold to that. However, when I'm in this position, when Player just checks back on the river on the bet. And we bet two dollars and he folds. And I think this is a good time to uh, end this video session. And uh, we'll continue on on the next videos. And I'll bring you more little tips and maybe some uh, pre-recorded session of either two, five, ten, or twenty-five piano. So I'll see you guys soon.